Just got back from watching the Barbie movie and there's a lot to discuss. Spoilers ahead, so fair warning. If you're new here, here's what we do. Damon and I are gonna break down all of our initial thoughts from the movie, such as important themes, things we found funny, and which actors crushed their roles. Let me start with the crowd real quick. Not only was it a packed crowd, but it was also one of the most diverse crowds I've seen. We got there 30 minutes ahead of time, and there was already a huge line outside. Going in, I expected the crowd to be mainly teenage girls, but that wasn't the case. I rolled in with a squad of four men in our late 20s, which in hindsight must have been pretty fucking funny to see, especially because this guy right here is built like an NFL tight end. Damon, give me your initial thoughts. All very true. And from my point of view, I try to avoid looking at movie ratings before I go in to see one, but I was worried this one might not live up to the hype. Sometimes movies just aren't meant for you, and that's okay. It's not your fault. I'm 99% sure Greta Gerwig probably wasn't picturing me and her target demo when she wrote this, but I still went in because I got some Truman Show vibes from the trailer, and I'm a card-holding member of the Ryan Gosling fan club, loud and proud. To me, it was really smart, funny, and sometimes silly comedy that balanced itself between satire, social commentary, and some occasional fan service. There are no multiples of Alan. He's just Alan. Yeah, I'm confused about that. Well, our guy Ryan Gosling put on an absolute show here. I'll see! Malibu Beach. This sounds cliche, but this year is really for me as a moviegoer. I've been trying to find stuff that's been a breath of fresh air from the usual Marvel and DC content barrage that the theaters have been dominated by since COVID essentially. We love our fair share of those movies anyway when we can get it, but Barbie seems to be one of those movies that's turning a page in the right direction. So just some background on the premise, the movie is primarily set in Barbie land where all the different variations of Barbie live in their own dream houses and the Kens basically live on the beach. I will beat both of you off at the same time. Beat oh, both of us off. Beach. Nobody's gonna beat anyone off. Every day is paradise, the weather is beautiful, everyone is friendly, beach volleyball games go down, and nights end with awesome dance parties. Margot Robbie plays stereotypical Barbie, the blonde hair, blue eyed version with insanely unrealistic proportions. Meanwhile, Ryan Gosling plays her version of Ken, and side note, he was a show stealer in this movie. I can. I can. I can. I can. I got us both ice cream. Cool. Everything seems to be going perfectly until Roby's Barbie starts having malfunctions, her feet begin touching the ground, she has bad breath, starts seeing some initial cellulite, and even has thoughts of death. You guys ever think about dying? This triggers an entire journey where she has to visit the real world to try and return things back to normal. Ken joins her on the adventure and that's when things get crazy. Unlike Barbie Land, where the Barbies run shit and the Kens are playing sidekick, the real world is a complete 180, full of sexism, patriarchy, and plenty of Barbie haters. We haven't played with Barbie since we were like five years old. Oh. Soon Barbie is struggling to comprehend reality, while Ken gets high off the patriarchy and discovers a deep passion for horses. But I'm a man. But not a doctor. Can I talk to a doctor? You are talking to a doctor. So first off, the movie was funny. Right away, the movie opens up with a slow motion montage of young girls destroying their baby dolls to epic music in the background while a giant Margot Robbie looms above. The entire theater was laughing from the jump and that scene set the tone right away and loosened up the crowd for what's to come. Also, I gave a little bit of love to Ryan Gosling earlier. I gotta give some love to Simu Liu. The friendly rivalry between him and Gosling in the movie was awesome and their scenes made me laugh a lot. Now we can't really talk about the Barbie movie without touching on some deeper aspects that might make us uncomfortable, but that's the whole point of this movie. Damon, why don't you start us off? Yeah, I didn't really expect things to get this heated, but here we are, I guess. I want to frame this with a little disclaimer that we are not scholars or film critics. I mean, we're basically just riffing on what our takes were as two dudes in their late 20s who watched this while putting down a couple of claws. As a result, we're probably going to miss a few things here, such as life. It is what it is. It is what it is. <laughs> One huge point to touch on is the role of society and women and how it interacts. Not a huge secret that Barbie's cultural impact hasn't always been that of a feminist icon, but the movie does a pretty good job at looking into the effects modern society has on women, throwing in some nice inside jokes and cool film references. Shout out to Space Odyssey for that intro that Chen mentioned earlier. There's a pretty wild joke connecting to fascism that had the theater dying as well as some nice comedy work from the Ken Squad, especially once they get radicalized by Ryan Gosling's dreams of horses, brewskis, and leather couches. Side note, I'm never looking at horses the same way again. When I mentioned The Truman Show earlier, that was a movie that touches a lot on the idea of reality versus a manicured or artificial world, which is better, which is worse, why, why not? 
the dual world aspect of the Barbie movie was pretty awesome. And at first I thought it was silly, but as the movie went on, I understood it more. The surreal nature of bouncing back and forth between Barbie land and the real world gave us a somewhat hallucinogenic feeling, but also reinforced the key theme of reality and the benefits of a real imperfect life with all of its aches and pains versus a manicured, artificial existence that lacks actual humanity. This could be a metaphor for the societal expectations placed on women. Again, I'm just freestyling here. Could also be some commentary on the benefits and drawbacks of ultimately acknowledging a cultural struggle without blinders on, or just sort of looking at life for what it is. There was a pretty cool moment that involved the creator of Barbie that related to this too. Okay, time to touch on feminism within this movie because let's face it, that's the discussion y'all came here for. Oh god, here we go. See, as a straight male, I left the movie feeling pretty good. Went out to the city with Damon and the boys and got hammered shortly after. I then saw what other people had to say and wow, am I shocked at the amount of sensitivity being displayed. As a guy, did I feel uncomfortable with how we were portrayed in the movie? Of course, but I think that's kind of the point. The juxtaposition between Barbie land and the real world is meant to highlight how women have felt in society forever. I'm seeing complaints about how the movie ends with the Barbie still running Barbie land and the Kens still not having many rights. This is the part where a lot of people complain about the movie hating men. But I find it interesting how nobody mentions that in the movie, the real world ends with the men still in charge. It's not like the mom, played by America Ferreira, all of a sudden holds an executive role at Mattel. So the movie essentially ends with the women running Barbie land and the men running the real world. Is it the happy, equal ending that you would want? Of course not, but once again, I think that's the point. In the real world, things are a lot more cruel and harsh. I actually think it sends a stronger message that the movie didn't end with everything being equal. Damon, why don't you finish this off by mentioning which actors and actresses crushed it. I'm fucking tired and I need some water and a cigarette. This cast list came out looking like the Western Conference All-Stars. Margot, what to say here? She delivered on this in a way that might be career-defining, which actually says a ton considering she's already turned in some tremendous performances to date. I love the way that she blended comedy and showed more emotion and self-realization while the film progressed. Gosling, I love badass Gosling, I love sad boy Gosling, and you know what? I damn well love over the top Gosling as well. He showed some comedy chops and fully embodied a satirical nature behind his role. It bordered on caricature sometimes, but it became more 3D as his character developed, and he had some pretty touching moments at the end of the movie, I won't lie. America Ferrero, weirdly enough, the first role I remember seeing her in was Lords of Dogtown, underrated flick if you ever get a chance to watch, but seeing her in something this mainstream was pretty cool. She was the emotional glue to a good amount of the plot and helped the film do a lot more showing than telling with the relationship her character as a mother had with her daughter. The inner 10 year old in me went crazy when I figured out Will Ferrell was going to be the main antagonist here. One of the comedy goats of the 2000s returns to form here in a sensational manner. He's playing a somewhat evil profit focused CEO and it was the perfect role and I want to see him in more surreal and satirical comedies from here on out. It lets him go to that silly Will Ferrell level that we know and love. The man still got it. Issa Rae, a lot of people have recommended Insecure to me and I might have to give it a watch after this. She brought wit and humor in some moments where I'm not sure a lot of other actors could have delivered. Solid performance by her. Michael Sarah, I miss this guy. This role was the yin to his role in This Is The End's Yang. A background character who, let's be honest, I had no clue who Alan actually was. I went for a real quick popcorn break at one point and Googled who it was when I was in the lobby of the movie theater. His character was truly humorous and he also acted as helpful to the cause for the Barbies and he resonated with Barbie more than you'd think at first. If I had to give you a nice little five paragraph essay conclusion paragraph, this would be it. Look, this movie's not for everyone. I also think it would be a little disingenuous to assume the whole movie is anti-men. Without spoiling anything outright, there's a pretty big moment toward the end of the film where it becomes clear that Ken's were actually getting a raw deal, but for anybody who enjoys going to the movies, we need movies like Barbie to succeed if we're going to keep cinema thriving. Especially if you've seen Greta Gerwig's previous works, you know what themes that she hits from time to time. The impact of Barbie and Oppenheimer prove that an original script and story concept can still get the job done on a massive scale if marketed properly. Big shout out to Greta for pulling this off. Barbie being Mattel IP doesn't detract from the fact that we haven't seen a lot of movies like this before, which was cool, but this has been a lot, so Chen, please tap in for me. So here's what I'll say. As a typical guy who grew up playing with Hot Wheels and footballs and watching WWE and shit, I had zero understanding of what Barbie dolls meant or their cultural significance, so I actually learned a lot from this movie. I learned that even though Barbie dolls were originally meant to empower women, they also did a ton to hurt the collective self-esteem and self-image of said girls playing with the dolls. 
mainly because the early versions of the doll had insane proportions that, once again, just aren't realistic. Basically, we're the archetype of the guys that the movie was making fun of, and you know what? That's okay. If you watch the videos on this channel, you know that we laugh at jokes about everyone, so it would be completely hypocritical for us to be upset when jokes are made about us. It wasn't the perfect film, but it was thought-provoking and entertaining, and I'm glad I watched it. Thanks for watching this video. Comment if you have some strong opinions. I'm sure there will be many. Uh, we'll catch y'all later.